Yo, Elliot, I've got a question about a woman's last name. My wife thinks that if she takes my last name, she will lose her identity. She told me that she had an idea since she was a little girl, so it probably means a lot to her. I told her that I will think about it because I really don't know anything about that. I don't know the history behind taking a husband's last name or the benefit of it. I only told her, uh, the only thing I told her is I may allow it that she takes both last names, keeps hers and adds mine. Maybe I made a mistake when I said that. What do you think about this topic? Very good question. And, you know, I have to point out the very first red flag that I see in, in, in conversation piece that I want to address in your question. And you say that my wife thinks that if she takes my last name, she will lose her identity. And she's right. She loses her identity in you. This is what marriage is. Marriage is marriage is a loss of a portion a significant portion of our identity you no longer identify as one and one you identify as one together you become one flesh i lose my identity in my wife now you got to hear me out when i say that it means that i use my life force i use my money i use my energy i use my thought energy. I use everything I have in order to protect, provide, and to help grow a life through her. This is why we have children. I have life through her. I've lost every time, and, and this is just a metaphor, but when you go into a woman, have sex with a woman, you go into a woman and you blow your essence into her. Think about that word essence. What is your essence? Your identity, right? And somebody said, well, tell me the essence of this book. You're identifying what the book is, a man's essence. When you blow your load, when you put your essence into a woman, you're giving her your identity. This is why um, uh, Steve Williams always talks about the power of your seed. Don't, don't forget the significance of your essence and where you put it. And when you're with a woman, you're giving her your essence. A lot of your identity then becomes enmeshed in her, particularly if you're fruitful in your pro, in your, in your, uh, in your, in your conjugal rights, or I don't know if you're even married, right? You're probably not married. So it goes both ways. We're no longer one. We become, we're no longer individuals. We, we become one flesh. And when you become that one flesh, there is a sacrifice. That's the thing in this culture. People want their cake and eat it too. Does that make sense? They, they want everything, but they don't want to give anything. They want all the benefits of a wedding, but they don't want to be a wife, Right? They want all the benefits, but none of the responsibility, all of the authority and none of the, none of the, uh, um, sacrifice. Everything worth having in life it requires a sacrifice, but the greatest of all unions, marriage is a dissolution of two egos in merging into one. I know in our culture, it's all about individualism, every individual for himself, autonomy, freedom, right? And we realize we've totally perverted this idea of freedom and autonomy and self-reliance because it becomes pathological to a certain degree when we can't give ourselves over to anything. You can't give yourself over to your job because you're always thinking about doing my own thing. I'm going to do something else. You don't give yourself over to school because, well, I can't give myself over to this because I want to go do something else and maybe I'm not going to use this major. We don't give ourselves over to our spouse because, well, maybe there's going to be somebody else or maybe something else or maybe I need to maintain my identity. It's a feminist ideal. Feminism is all about destroying the bond between men and women by telling women silly things like you need to keep your last name because that's your identity. Your identity is not in your husband. My wife's identity is in me. My identity is in her. When somebody asks Elliot, what are you? One of the top things on my list is husband and father. It's usually one of the first. I talk about my career because careerism reigns the day, so I'll say that I'm a strength coach. But very, fo very shortly followed after that, wife uh, is, uh, is, I have a wife, I'm a husband, and I'm father. My daughters were sort of like teasing my wife a little bit last night about like, well, what are you, mom? What are you, mom? What are you, mom? Right? 
because they have a lot of like uh, they come from this culture and so they're a lot of feminist mindsets and my wife was kind of like embarrassed a little bit because she didn't know what to say and I said wait a second hold on what is she what did she do with you all day here today she was your teacher what else did she do she cooked for you she's your chef what else did she do she maintains this house she's a homekeeper what else on top of that she's a great wife she's got more jobs she has more identity in the family than in her name. Her identity is in all the fruitfulness and gifts and virtue and value that she produced through her family. How does the family come about? Traditional marriage to a man. What does that require? That she becomes the man's body. My head and my body don't have different zip codes. If I'm the head of the family, if I'm the head of my wife, my wife is my body and my heart, we take on one name. But you don't take the body's name, you take the head's name. Right? The head. The head is the leader. So traditionally, biblically, you see that Eve came from Adam. How could that be? It's a mystery. But it's significant. There's great meaning behind that. Not only did she come from Adam, she came from a part of his cardiovascular system, his heart. The woman is not just a part of your body like your arm or your foot. She's the heart. She's the breath. She's the, she, like the lungs that the ribs support, pumps life through the body. Significant to be the body, but it's not the head. The head is the name, the head is the leader in that way. The word becomes the flesh. The word is first. What is the words? Symbols. What are names? Symbols. The word comes before the flesh. The idea, we were talking about manifestation the other day too, earlier today. What happens? The, the thought then becomes the reality. The man is spirit. The woman is material. Right? Man is patriarch, pattern, paternity. Right? This is where we get the word pattern. What is pattern? Pattern is not the thing. It's the, it's the blueprint for the thing. It's the idea. This is why it begins. What's first? The idea. The word. Then the body manifests, brings it forth in the same way. The head goes into the woman and the woman produces the body. When I say head, I'm talking about this head too. Not this head, that head. But head, you get it, is first. So tradition makes it such that a woman humbles herself and takes on the identity of her husband. Feminists don't like this. The gynocentric world has taught against this. Your wife has obviously been convinced that tradition is of no value and it's oppressive and she wants to keep her name. So in the same way, she probably will never really identify with you. She wants to maintain her own identity. And I will say that's a recipe for not a good family. She must lose her identity in you and in her family. But this is the way it is with these women today. They want to, make, they want to keep their name. They want to keep their career. They want to keep riding the carousel. They want to keep doing all these things that make them think that they're empowered. But they lose. You lose identity in your family. I mean, when it really boils down to it, that's the greatest gift a woman can give. We don't need any more female CEOs. We don't need any strong, independent women. We don't need any more, we don't need a woman president as much as they convince us we need. We need better moms. We need better fathers, better husbands, but it requires wives. Be a wife. Don't just get married, be a wife. And a wife loses her identity. So, you know, I would, I would, I would challenge her with that. She says, oh, I'm gonna lose my identity. You say, well, if you're gonna marry me, in essence, you do lose your identity. We both merge into one. I lose my identity too. You know how a man loses his identity? And look, there's virtue and there's nature. And as man, we rise above nature by virtue, doesn't mean nature 
is wrong or that we don't acknowledge it, but we're better than nature. As a man, it is in our nature to have unlimited access to unlimited women, right? That's the nature of man. The energy rises up in him and he can, he can literally have sex with dozens or hundreds of women and it have no real bearing on his soul if he's grounded. But to marry a woman and to be monogamous, he loses his sexual identity in that way, that natural sexual inclination. Think of it this way. A man's natural sexual inclination to, to unlimited access to unlimited women is just as natural as a woman's desire to rule over her husband, as her desire to be the usurper of power. You saw it in the garden with Adam and Eve. It's a part of her fallen nature to want to be a feminist. This is why feminism works, because we, we, in our culture, we live by our lowest inclinations. That's why we have porn and masturbation and fornication and promiscuity, but also why we have feminism and careerism and women who want to be men, right? Have all the benefits of a man, but none of the responsibility. It doesn't work. So long story short, she will lose her identity in you. And it is a sign of that union that she takes your name. I remember when Colleen and I, this is, you know, I, I just think back. I know that the grace of God has brought me to where I am because I didn't know what I was doing most of my life. But I just look back in certain things and I'm like, wow, that's why it worked. Wow, that's why it's worked. I could just, I just know in, in, in hindsight, you know, say hindsight is 2020. I remember when Colleen was in high school, when she and I were in high school, and we were just, you know, we were teenagers loving up on each other. She would draw her name, Colleen Hulse, over and over and over again on a piece of paper. She, she, I, I would see pieces of paper, like, you know, in, in her notebook, and she's like, Colleen Hulse, Colleen Hulse, Colleen Hulse. She could not wait to lose her identity in me through marriage. Well, that's why I married her. <laughs> she wanted my last name. She craved my last name. I would say to you, don't be with a woman that doesn't crave two things from you. She must crave your seed, not your sex, your seed. But she don't crave your seed, meaning I want this man's babies. Then she's not, she's not going to receive you. She's not worthy of you. And if she don't want your name, you don't want my name or my seed, my essence at all. She doesn't want your essence. She's not interested in your essence. She's interested in the status of having a man so that the world can see that she's married because there's some benefit to it, right? And whatever else there is. But she don't want to sacrifice. I want a woman that wants my essence. Take my seed, take my name. In fact, I give you my seed, I give you my name. And I don't give it to just anyone. And if a woman don't want to receive it, I don't want to give it. So I don't want to tell you, I don't know... What to tell you to do with regard to this, uh, your wife, you said, my wife thinks that she takes my last name, she loses her identity. She's already your wife, I don't know. To me, that's not a good sign, but we're all different. Maybe it'll work out for you. He says, I told her that I'll think about it because I don't really know anything about it. Well, now you know a little bit about it, right? It is about ownership. It is about identification in your beloved. My wife owns me. I own my wife. I know that's a hard concept for people to, to receive, but it's because we're so damn perverted. We're perverted in our own minds, perverted in our own bodies, and we deal with perverted people. These are degenerate, broken people. If you're degenerate and broken, you can't give yourself to someone because you bring along all that brokenness. But if you're humble and you're well-ordered and you're traditional, can't wait to lose yourself in that other person and become one flesh. That's why marriage is forever. She's not into this. She's not into you forever. Sorry to tell you. She's not into the forever game with you. She's into keeping her options open. That's why she want to keep her own her last name. She want to keep her identity, her, her, her independence from you. I don't want to marry a woman that wants to keep her independence separate from mine. Sorry. Does that make me a bad man? Well, according to feminists, yes. But according to what works for a family, what works in a marriage, what works traditionally, 
But works is you no longer yourself. You no longer have identity. Your identity is found in what we do together. But you know, it's funny because there's so much resistance with regard to that in the family, but a woman will lose her identity 100% for her fucking career. She will lose her identity as a woman, as a wife, as a mother, as all that she could provide and, and, and produce in this world that is good for her career. She'll identify with her boss. No question about it. Somebody asked her, you know, asked me a little bit of, or asked her a little bit about herself. First thing she's going to talk about is her career. I want a woman, the first thing she's going to talk about is her family. They'll be so willing to lose their identity over their career that they will forsake their family as a result. If I was ever confronted with the situation where my family needed my wife, but she was too busy at work, I would have a big problem with that. Wait a second. We are doing this so we can have a family because our primary vocation in life is marriage and family, father and mother. But because you chasing your independence, you chasing your your dreams out there in the world, which is totally perverted because you have a family at home, which is really your gift, your value to the world. We suffer here. I don't I would not bend for that. I wouldn't I would never yield to that. That's not a good idea, in my opinion. These men, and look, I get it, everybody's different. I'm just ranting, I'm just giving my opinion. But these men that have to play the mommy role at home because mommy's out there playing a dick game in the world are severely misled, in my opinion. It's a sad situation because the polarity has been switched. And with the switch polarity, there's very low sexuality. And where there's no sexual polarity... There's no, there's no relationship unless you've decided to live celibately with your wife and then you're both taking a vow of chastity and you're living a life of prayer and then that's a totally different, that's like, you know, when they show those memes that like, you know, the small brain, then the big brain and then the brain that is exploding, that's the brain exploding like, whoa, right? Living together but choosing to be chaste so that you can dedicate your lives to prayer and, and service to your family. Whoa, no more sex. Whoa, that's taking it to another level. I don't know if that's, you know, most people are ready for that. <laughs> he says, I told her the only thing is I may allow is she takes both last names, keeps hers in mind. Maybe I made a mistake when I said that. I don't want, well, I'm not going to say you made a mistake. You really, your question is, what do you think about this topic? I'm just telling you what I think about the topic. I'm not saying you made a mistake, but I don't want my wife to have no two last names. So the world, then you know what? The other thing with these women and, and it, and their last names too, social media, social media. These women don't want to not be able to be found by their ex-flings. This is, I remember this when first Facebook first came out. Facebook first came out, I remember this. My wife's name on Facebook was Colleen Hulse, right? This was like back in like 2007. My wife's name was Colleen Hulse, but I, would, I didn't even have Facebook, but I'll look over her shoulder, right? Because one of her friends invited her and back then you had to be invited. My friends invited her, and I was like, oh, what's this? And I look over, and I would see certain people I know, women. I see women I know that she's friends with, and I'd be like, wait a second. Why she got two last names? I didn't understand at the time. I was like, because I know she didn't take two last names. I know she changed her name. Why is she, why is she, uh, why is she putting both last names on there? And my wife explained to me because she wanted to make sure that people from her past could find her. <laughs> <laughs> That don't sound like a good idea to me. My wife is so interested in connecting with people from her past that she wants to pervert her name. I would say, what are you looking for? Who are you waiting for? Who from your past is so important that they need to find you that you got to pervert your name on social media? All right. That don't make any sense to me. You're now forsaking my name so that ex-boyfriends, I don't know, so other people can find you? Why? Don't make any sense to me. Anyway, so I'm going <laughs> to I'm gonna stop there. I don't think it's a good idea. I'm sure everything is going to work out well for you. I'm sure it'll be okay. I wouldn't lose sleep over it. But it's good to know from which paradigm your woman is operating from. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip 
from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.